I'm a little hoarse this evening because I had a funeral also today, so bear with me. I may pause more than normal. By now, it is probably obvious to all human beings on the planet that no two human beings on the planet are able to agree on things, at least not all the time. In fact, any police detective will tell you that if five witnesses give you the same story about what they saw, that means there's a criminal conspiracy because nobody will remember the events, the events exactly the same or report it exactly the same. And when it comes to matters of personal truth, human beings are equally terrible about keeping things straight. I'm talking about the nativity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Birth happens every day. Children are born. It's a perfectly natural cycle that is well known to us. We know that it's difficult. It can be painful. It is bloody. There's screaming. There's crying. You name it. And yet, somehow or another, there's a whole lot of different versions of the birth of our Lord Jesus. Not in the scripture, but floating around in the culture from the ancient church on. There's any number of weird and incredible heresies. The type of which, well, you might still find them on the History Channel on any given day near the season of Christmas. Weird things that people were teaching. Things like... Jesus miraculously popped out of the side of the Virgin Mary without pain, without blood, without any of those things that are normal to human birth. Almost like a Super Mario brother appearing from a warp zone, and you didn't even get that reference. There's all these doctrines about the miraculous birth of Jesus or how he popped out or how he was delivered, some of which are strangely reminiscent of how the goddess Athena is supposed to have jumped out of the skull of her father, Zeus, incredibly. Why? Why would there be all of these weird and wacky stories about the birth of Christ? Why does it matter? And if you're really lucky, you never heard any of these things until just now from me. But why do they matter, and why bring them up? Well, because Jesus matters and who Jesus is who Jesus is is the whole game the whole shooting match the whole contest the whole ball of wax whatever metaphor we want to use who Jesus is is nothing more than life or death how we define who Jesus is is nothing short of eternal life versus eternal damnation. There's only one Jesus, and there is only one Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. And all the other false Jesuses, and there are many that take his name, all of the false Christs who call themselves baby Jesus, but are defined by heresies and false doctrine and weird, wacky ideas of extraterrestrials or immaculate births, are not the real Jesus. And the real Jesus is the only one who can save. There's no salvation in a fake Jesus. It matters because it matters for everyone and everything in the cosmos who Jesus is. And that, of course, is precisely why there are so many weird, wild, and wacky ideas about it. That's why there is so much focus by the devil and evil in the world to twist the meaning of who Jesus is. It's also why it's so easy for human beings to look at the events in hindsight and invent all of these crazy stories. Here's the key. The great heresy of our time, or Say some of, some of the great heresies that emerge in what is called Christianity involve making Jesus too much God. 
that sound weird? Most of the really bad heresies of the ancient world, of course, they all dealt with the nature of that question. Who is Jesus? And those ancient heresies that are still alive, the false doctrines you can still see preached all the time and taught, are based on this question. Who is Jesus? And the temptation to make Jesus too much God is one that infects the Christian churches. How can Jesus be too much God? Simple. When we degrade his human nature. If Jesus does not become flesh like ours in every way but sin, then he cannot suffer. And if he cannot suffer, he cannot atone for the sins of the world. If Jesus only appears to be human for our benefit, the atonement is fake. If Jesus is an angel that just masquerades as a human in a hologram, that atonement is fake. Jesus, who pops out of the side of his mother like some miraculous Pop-Tart, cannot save because he has to be like us in every way but sin. We even have some of this, surprisingly enough, in some of the Christmas carols that we even put in our hymnal. Have you under, ever wondered why little Lord Jesus no crying he makes? He doesn't cry? I bet he doesn't poop either. There's no diapers probably at the scene. But of course, if he doesn't do all of those things, then he's not the real Jesus. It's an effort by our sinful nature to look at Jesus and say, we're going to make you better. We're going to put you on such a pedestal that we will make you like the pagan gods of old, and we will put you up on Mount Olympus, and you will be unapproachable, unattainable, uncompre incomprehensible, and of course you would never fill a diaper or cry and wake your mother in the middle of the night. It's a false doctrine that says we are so righteous that we will make you a better Christ than what you really are. And what this does, well, it's that effort of our sinful selves to justify ourselves, to justify ourselves by our works, to justify ourselves by our personal righteousness, that deep down we're uncomfortable with God in the flesh being really human. The idea that a young woman in Judea in the first century held God and rocked him to sleep. The idea that in screaming and blood and agony and all of the other human stuff and stink that comes with birth into the world, that God would do that. That God would allow himself to be a child of the law, though he is the God who wrote the law that God would allow himself to be circumcised on the eighth day, his private member mutilated by a priest. The idea that God could run around and slip and fall and skin his knees, I wonder if he could do that, or is that imperfection? The idea that God becomes like us in every way but sin is the first scandal of the cross. You see, if Jesus isn't truly human, there is no scandal of the cross. If he's an angel masquerading as dying and suffering, then it doesn't matter. If he only of pretending to be human and then pretending to be suffer, well, then we've made him a liar multiple times, not only by his incarnation, but by his pretense to suffering and dying on that cross. It's something deeply rooted inside of us that wants to justify ourselves in the sight of God and one of the ways we do that is by overzealous appearances of goodness and virtue, so much so that God couldn't possibly need diapers. What the heck are you saying? But of course God did. Because when, like any other time, that we deny our sin, or seek self-justification, or focus on a theology of glory in the world and in worldly terms, we lose the real beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
the real beauty of the nativity is in the screaming and the blood in the agony and in all of the filth and stink that comes with human delivery the beauty of the circumcision of our lord is that he is cut and he bleeds the first blood of the atonement the first of his divine blood shed for us so that he could become like a child of the law him who wrote the law and delivered it on Sinai. The beauty of this season is that God becomes all of those things for us, with us, among us, to liberate us from ourselves. That he is not a God who is unloving or unkind or wrathful or vengeful. He is not a God that would abandon us or disown us or destroy us forever. He's a God that is willing to lower himself, to put off all of his power, all of his glory, his throne in heaven, everything, even to allowing us to drag him away to a cross by lies and by jealousies and to murder him there so that he can forgive us for what we are doing to him at that very moment and forgive us for all of our sin. The beauty of the season is that Jesus cries in his crib and he is human, like us in every way but sin. The scandal of the God who becomes flesh is the scandal of the cross, but that's also the beauty of the crib and the cross to the manger and the grave to the empty tomb and the ascension into heaven, the beauty of it all for those for those that are called to believe it in Jesus name amen